Hello everyone! For this week, we're going to do a story that's been requested a lot, almost as much as the Lich King story. It's the story of the Ashbringer. This was the weapon that was a scourge to the scourge. It converted into darkness, only to be reignited by the light and strike down Frostmourne itself. It has a beautiful story and we're going to do it probably in two parts, but I get ahead of myself. First, let's talk about its origin and its creation. So sit back, relax, and I hope you'll enjoy. The origin of the Ashbringer goes back to the time of the first Orcish Horde invasion. The Alliance of Lordran has been able to push back Doomhammer and his forces all the way back to the Blackrock Mountain, and there the Horde is ready to make its final stand. The Alliance of Lordran is ready to meet them head on, and they're not alone in this fight. The Paladins of the Order of the Silver Hand are with them, and amongst them is a Paladin called Alexandros Mograine. Mograine in the distance, he spots an Orcish Warlock dealing massive damage to the troops, and he orders soldiers to shoot the Warlock down. As they do, the Warlock drops a mysterious artifact full of darkness, the artifact he used to empower his spells. Mograine reached down to pick it up, and as he did, the darkness from the artifact Effect, it took away the flesh around his hand and his light was unable to heal the wounds. Despite its obvious sinister nature, Mograine decides to keep the artifacts and the war against the Horde would be won by the Alliance. A few years later, Mograin received a visit at his home from High Inquisitor Fairbanks. With him live his two sons, Renault and Darian Mograin, with Darian being the youngest of the two. Darian, when he was born, he nearly didn't make it, but his father, he took him outside of their house and he placed him in cold water. To his joy and relief, his newborn son started to cry, but when he went back inside the house to show him to his mother, he found out that his wife had not survived giving birth to their son. From that moment on, Darian would always be his father's favorites since he had his mother's eyes and losing Darian would mean losing his beloved wife all over again so Darian was a favorite of his father. Renault was often told to keep an eye on his youngest brother but the boys didn't always listen. Once they nearly touched the foul artifact Alexandros had brought with him from the war but thankfully nothing bad happened because their father caught them in the acts. Now here we had Fairbanks at their home, informing Mograine that a plague was spreading across the lands. Arthas, Jaina and Ufer, they were already sent out by the king to investigate the plague, but so far they had no success. Mograine had already been wanting to discuss something with some of the other members of the Silver Hand, so they met up in South Shore to discuss this mysterious artifact. You see, Mograine, he always believed that without light there can't be darkness. Light and shadow, they're two parts of the same coin, and he believed that they could forge this artifact into a weapon of righteousness. His fellow men did not believe his conviction. They tried to destroy the orb with the holy light, but instead of destroying it, the artifact actually absorbed the light. More and more light they cast upon the orb until no trace of shadow remained and the artifact was turned from darkness into light. Mograine then picked it up and as a miracle, not only his scorn hand was healed, but his entire soul was cleansed. Mograine had been right about the artifact and the the situation with the plague had become worse. Lord Commander Dafrohan, he showed up to inform them that Prince Arthas had made the terrible decision to purge Strathholm. He removed the paladins of the Silver Hand from service, and he had set sail to the lands of Northrend. Lord Uther, by my right of succession and the sovereignty of my crown, I hereby relieve you of your command and suspend your paladins from service. Arthas, you can't just... It's done! Those of you who have the will to save this land Follow me. The rest of you, get out of my sight. Officially, they were not allowed to do anything anymore at this point, but still, Dafrohan, he told Mograine to take the artifact and go to Idaforge. There, the finest crafters in the world, the dwarves, would be able to take the artifact, forge it to a weapon, and they could use it against the Scourge. Alexandros and Fairbanks, they met up with King Magni Bronzebeard once they arrived at Ida Forge, and Magni was in a foul mood. He had been informed that his brother murdered in Bronzebeard, he'd been killed by the treacherous prince. He was grieving and hurting, but he accepted the job of crafting the weapon. There are those that believe that master dwarven blacksmiths, they possess the ability to impart emotions into the blades they shape. As Magni stood before the orb, thinking of the brother he would never see again, he harnessed all of his rage, his fury, his desire for vengeance. He called upon it, he willed it into being, and with a massive war cry that echoed in the vastness of the Great Forge, 
he brought the hammer down again and again and again until finally he had crafted the finest weapon ever created by his hands. He passed on the weapon to Mograine, hoping that it was not too late, because in the meantime, Arthas, he just made his way home and he had murdered his own father. With great haste, Mograine and Fairbanks, they rode back home, since Mograine feared that something might have happened to his sons, but thankfully, they were smart enough to move to Harf Glen. As Mograine, relieved of course, he stepped out of his home and a small band of Scourge emerged from the woods. In an instant, they met with this new mighty blade, infused by Magni's emotions and the light itself, and in an instant, the battle was over. The blade felt as much part of Mograine as the blood that ran through his veins, a beautiful, lethal creation that led nothing but charred bone in its wake. From that moment on, the weapon would be known as the Ashbringer, and together with his wielder, it did just that. It turned thousands upon thousands of Scourge into nothing but ash. That's how the Ashbringer came to be, and for a time, Alexandros and the Blade, they were the Scourge against the Scourge. The Burning Legion would eventually be defeated at Mount Hyjal, but the threat of the undead, it was not so easily vanquished, and even the mightiest heroes can fall. One day, Alexandros, Davrohan, and several others, they made way to Strathholm to cleanse it of the undead, but the undead, they were waiting for them. In the struggle, Davrohan, he was separated from his comrades, and he fell right into the hands of the dreadlords named Belnazar. Belnazar did not just kill Dafrahan, oh no, he infiltrated his body and soul and he masked himself to infiltrate the order and manipulate it from within. He set to work upon corrupting Renaud Mograine, the eldest son, he turned him against his father and his brother. There was always a rift since his father had favored Darien for so many years and Belnazar, he preyed upon the darkness within Renaud's soul, he convinced him to betray his father in exchange for great power and prestige. Renault was told to convince his father that Darien had been kidnapped by the undead and taken to Strathholm. With all haste, Alexandros and Fairbanks, they rode to Strathholm together right into a trap. Countless of undeads, they were waiting for them there, and while Fairbanks, he simply fell under their numbers, Mograine kept slicing them down until countless numbers turned into only a few, and even those few fell before the Ashbringer. The battle had been endless though, Mograine, he was tired and he had dropped his weapon. This was the opportunity his son had been waiting for, as Renault appeared, he picked up his father's blade and he stabbed his own father in the back. Alexandros was betrayed by his own son, and even worse, this plan, it was created by Belnazar and Kelfuzad, since Kelfuzad he knew that Alexandros was a great enemy to the Scourge, but he could become an even greater ally. He took the body back to Naxxramas, he started to torture him until nothing remained of the once righteous paladin. All that remained now was the Death Knight Mograine, one of the four horsemen, and he wielded the corrupted Ashbringer. I was In the meantime, the order it was not doing so well. They had found out about Alexandros' death. Fairbanks had actually survived the trap at Strathholm, but as he tried to expose Renault as the betrayer that he was, he was placed in chains. Belnazar, disguised as that leader, it was still covering for Renault, he was corrupting them from within, and while some wanted to recruit help from different races against the Scourge, others believed that their organization should remain pure. In light of this, the Order it split up, whereas the Scarlet Crusade it received Renault Mograine as their first commander, while others formed the organization known as the Argent Dawn, which Darien Mograine joins. Darien, up to this point, only knew that his father had died, and he didn't believe Fairbanks' words about his brother were true. One day, he met with a troll called Zabra Hex, and this troll had earlier taken up residence within the Scarlet Monastery, and from its books, he had found his faith in the light. He had actually met Alexandros Mograine before, they had made a connection with each other, Alexandros had spared the troll's life, and Zabra could still feel their connection. He knew that Darien's father was still alive, he had dreamed of a floating forest 
fortress above a burning city. It seemed like madness, but if his father was still alive, then Darien had to go and try and save him. From within the Argent Dawn, he recruited volunteers to join him into Nactaramas on what could surely be a suicide mission. But despite all odds and a few casualties along the way, Darien manages to reach the four horsemen and take out his own father. This act stopped his father's physical form as one of the horsemen, but his spirit, it was still bound to the corrupted blade and it would know no rest. From the weapon, his father whispered to Darien to get out of Naxxramas as fast as he could and take the sword to the Scarlet Monastery. Darien's brother Renaud still led the Scarlet Crusade and his father had a lust for vengeance. When Renaud struck out against Darien when he saw his brother, called him a traitor, was prepared to sever the final ties to his former life, from the blade rose the spirit of Alexandros Mograin. Renault couldn't believe his eyes, he begged his father to forgive him, and with a quick slice his father ended his life and told him that he was forgiven. The youngest of the Mograin family couldn't believe what had happened to his father, but the Scourge it was still gathering more and more forces and they were getting ready to assault Light's Hope Chapel. In a dream, Darien talked with Fairbanks, since Fairbanks he already lost his life within a monastery of course, and they were talking about finding some way to redeem his father's soul. Darien was not ready to give up on his father quite yet, and Fairbanks told him to seek out the exiled Tyrion Fordring. I'll dedicate a video to Tyrion in the future, the, the short version of his story is that in the past Tyrion was a member of the Knights of the Silver Hand, he was a paladin himself, but his honor compelled him to protect an orc named Etric. This act caused him to lose his titles, his lands, and he even tried to take away his lights. But Tyrion found out that no one can take away your conviction in the lights. He has spent years in exile, watching from a distance as his son Talon grow up. And now Darien is told to talk to this exiled paladin. At first, Tyrion, he has no desire to listen to Darien, but he changes his mind when Darien tells him that his father's soul is at stake. The entire tale about his father seems disturbing and unbelievable, but Tyrion can sense that a soul is trapped within the blades, and he tells Darien that if there's anything that might undo the corruption, then it would be an act of love greater than the act of evil that corrupted the sword. Such an act is often the ultimate test of faith, and with this knowledge in mind, Darien, he makes his way back to the Argent Dawn, but before he leaves, he asks Tyrion to come back. Tyrion was once a vessel of the light with faith, wisdom, valor, honor. Tyrion was once a paladin and an inspiration. He could be a hero once more, but the decision is for Tyrion to make. Once Darien arrives at Light's Hope, he finds out that the massive Scourge army is making its way to the chapel. Beneath it, beneath the chapel, the Order has made sure that a thousand of the bravest souls, warriors, priests, paladins, champions of battles long past, they will all move beneath the chapel to keep them away from the Scourge. To make sure that they would not be turned into the undead and not turned into their enemy. Kelfuzad and the Scourge, they know this, they know that's exactly why they want to take the chapel. And the Archendon gets ready to lay down their lives to defend this holy place. In the distance, they see them coming. A hundred, thousands, uncountable abominations of the Scourge marching upon their little army. The light, their faith, it is with them. But against these numbers, it's simply not enough. Those that fall are turned into the undead themselves. Not even the arrival of Tyrion Fordring himself can stem the tide of battle. And Darien realizes what he must do. A strong act of love, the ultimate test of faith, a greater act of love than the evil that corrupted the blade. Darien takes the corrupted Ashbringer and he stabs himself with the weapon. His soul in exchange for that of his father and in response the heavens themselves open up. A reckoning of a thousand vengeful souls, the light itself, it crashes down upon the Scourge army and it decimates them within seconds. As Darien falls down on his knees he can feel darkness close in. His actions have saved the day but in the end Kelfuzad he has not lost everything just yet. He claims the youngest Mograin as his new death knight and the new wielder of the corrupted Ashbringer. Father, I wish to join you in the war against the undead. I want to fight. I can sit idle no longer. Darian Mograin, you are barely of age to hold a sword, let alone battle the undead hordes of Lordaeron. I could not bear losing you. Even the thought... If I die, Father... I would rather it be on my feet, standing in defiance against the undead legions. 
If I die, let me die with you! My son, there will come a day when you will command the Ashbringer, and with it, meet out justice across this land. I have no doubt that when that day finally comes, you will bring pride to our people, and that Lordaeron will be a better place because of you. But, my son, that day is not today. Do not forget. Darian has set his father free, and in exchange, he himself has become an agent of the Lich King, an agent of the Scourge. This brings us to the end of part 1 for the story of the Ashbringer and next week we'll continue since the Blade still has a big part to play within the story. Not only was the corrupted Ashbringer in the game once upon a time with its own special event, those that have created Death Knight in the past already know that light and darkness is not set in stone. However, I'll save that story for next week since I've been going on for long enough. Thank you very much for watching everyone, I really hope that you enjoyed the story so far. I'm very excited that we're finally doing the story of the Ashbringer. Subscribe if you like my videos, and until next time guys, see ya!